schools think different. Executives at school at institutions think differently. So the president of a university is a president of a multi-billion dollar company. And they're usually running a multi-billion dollar healthcare system as well. They're CEO of a, like a hospital chain. And sports are a piece of that. So one of the things that I, I used to always get really annoyed at these SEC commercials that say like, it just means more. And it's like, it's just, it's like Paul Feinbaum drivel. Um, and I thought, how do I show the economics of this? Like, I think it means more because it means more money wise to them. And it does. So I created this SEC, do you care as much as we do index, which figures out how much of your university's core academic budget comes from football profits interestingly enough. And then I set it at an index of SEC equals 100. So, you know, an average SEC school is 100. How much, you know, does your school rely on football profits? And if you take a look at the ACC, I think it's fascinating because it shows, you know, kind of the splits that you guys have in your conference that are sort of tearing it apart a little bit right now, which is that, you know, Clemson and Louisville act very much like SEC schools. You guys are little lower you're more like kind of like a big 12 school and, and that's a good thing it's good to be lower lower means you have a bigger school with a, a bigger enterprise you know a bigger academic enterprise um you see clemson is actually above sec levels now when you take a look at the big 10 remember sec is 100 nebraska is the only thing that's even close iowa's along with you guys others of them are at 40 and that's with the 30. big 10 making so much more money per school than the acc even yeah, and the big yeah, exactly. And the Big Ten's making a they're not only are they making a fortune, but they are just so big and such giant educational enterprises that the sports are even tiny. And then if you take a look at the Pac 12, which is sort of why they fit so well with the Big Ten, um, they're even lower. You know, UCLA is a 15 out of hundred. And UCLA, and they make a lot of money. The, the, the last this is by the way, these are 2019 numbers that are from before um before all the COVID mess, you know, screwed everybody's budgets up. I, don't, I ignore that that year because it's just dumb numbers. And so, you know, from that end, you guys, you guys fit much more with the, here's the SEC itself. You know, you guys were at 87, right? So you guys are right there with Georgia, you're right there with Mizzou. I mean, those are great schools, great, you know, great institutions in, in the SEC. Your, your numbers just don't really look like a Big Ten school. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just the Big Ten schools are just a little bit different. And the, and the AAU thing is because it, it's not just like, did you get in the AAU? It's like, are you the type of institution? And then are you as an executive going to be making decisions on my, if I'm a, you know, another member of that conference, it's like, are you making decisions about my students that, that are the kinds of decisions I want made? So, um, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to follow along what you said and, and your numbers are, are mind-blowingly amazing. Let me just give you credit for all that math you did. I haven't taken a math course since high school, and your math is amazing there. Oh, thanks. Uh, but my question to you would be this. So looking at your numbers and looking at what the schools bring to the table, and, and you, like you said, Florida State has blossomed academically from the time when, when James and I were students there, when we got our degrees from there. My question to you would be this. If you're Florida State right now, in 2022, it's July of 2022, do you hit your wagon to, because there's various reports saying they could go to the Big Ten. Maybe do they go with a Miami and a Notre Dame to the Big Ten? Do they go, there's reports that the SEC is looking at Clemson, North Carolina, Virginia, and Florida State, mostly because they have on-campus stadiums. And that's one of the reasons why they're not looking at Miami. Obviously, none of us have been in the room. None of us know what are involved in any conversations. Would you as Florida State, I feel like they have to go with somebody. I feel like you have to be a package deal with somebody. Do you at this point package with Clemson and say maybe Clemson SEC? Do you package with your, your in-state rival Miami or Notre Dame and go to a Big Ten where, yes, it may look a little different, but the, the academic prestige, the, how we could raise our school academically, and the money that can come in, and we, we can talk about the money from that aspect. So I'll tell you if – so if you think about like a really good student, right? Mm -hmm. And they're looking at maybe- Me, me for example. Well, you, you for example, exactly. And you're debating about, do you want to go to Georgetown or do you want to go to Harvard? And you're pretty sure you get into Georgetown. And Harvard's a little bit of a long shot. Um, you should apply to Harvard and try to go to Harvard anyway. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same thing is probably true with 
you know, Florida State in the Big Ten. Florida State should absolutely try everything they can to get in the Big Ten because the advantages of the Big Ten, again, the integration of your libraries, the integration of your research, the integration of your the leadership programs to teach your faculty how to run their departments. The I mean, the Big Ten together saves millions of dollars a year just off like car rent, sharing their car, joint car rental contract. You know, I mean, like literally things like that are just enormous it, reasons to be in the Big Ten. Chicago dropped sport, dropped football entirely in 1939, stayed in the Big Ten academic wing. Like they're still part of the BTAA because the advantages of being a part of that are so big. B is for billions. You know, if you can get in on that, you absolutely want to get in it. And you, I know you guys have a, a pretty new president, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I'm sure he is, you know, launching new strategic plans and all that. From kind Harvard, of I believe. What? Um, Harvard roots, which are in the AAU, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The kings of the AAU. Exactly. And that's the kind of thing is if you can go in there and sell the story of saying, we're going to take Florida State and do just what Michigan State did and build ourselves into a world class you know, institution, you bet we're going to be in the AAU. We're going to be running the AAU. We're going to take Florida State and build it into something that's never been before. Um, look at our ascendancy. This is the same thing Utah did. So Utah um, was, was very much on an academic upswing when they joined the Pac-12. And just like you said, you, you nailed it on the head when you were like, wouldn't it help to have all your conference on your side? Oh, that's exactly what Utah did. And Utah, like within, I think, three years or something of joining the Pac-12, they got their AAU invitation. So for Florida State, if you can get into the Big Ten, go for it 100%. And in fact, quite honestly, with your new president starting and if he's, he's doing uh, you know, stuff to you know, building his new strategic plan, launching it, bringing in new people, you know, putting more emphasis on research, all that kind of stuff, probably perfect that the Big Ten's taking a little bit of a breather on membership. You, know, you guys probably would love nothing more than to take it. Uh, every year, Florida State gets better academically. Every year, you guys are doing more things, you know, branching out and do and and building the institution. So every year that you sit in the ACC, if you want to be in the Big Ten long term, which is strategically better for your school, uh, then absolutely, like every year you can get closer to that, or you can get more like more AAU style, like go for it, uh, so that you could be able to get that. Uh, you know, right? If if like the world is sort of blowing up right now. I think, you know, if, if it was like you guys or Washington, Washington is more of a Big Ten school. You guys are Stanford. You know, obviously Stanford should will probably be a Big Ten school above everybody, I think, for a number of reasons. But if you can build the institution to get that, you should take it. Um, at the same time, if the SEC opportunity comes along and it's sort of like now or never, you take that. Um, the thing of it is, is I think you guys are in a can't lose position right now. I also don't know, you know, the, the problem is that the fin finances right now in the ACC are just continuing to lag. Um, but I'll tell you, there's another thing that nobody's talking about that I think is going to become a big thing for the ACC. Uh, and that is that there's a ton of money being left on the table for basketball. So the thing about basketball is you guys probably know this. I don't want to bore everybody, but the basketball money goes out all to all divisions, of the NCAA division two, II, division three, everybody gets spent by the NCAA. The basketball money is just like party time with the NCAA given, given out to everybody like social welfare checks. It's like communism is beautiful if you are into that. Um, but if you're the schools that are earning the money, like the ACC, it's not so beautiful because there's a lot of money being left on the table with the college basketball tournament. So if the major conferences wanted to do with college basketball what they did with college football, which is say, we're going to take it over. It's our money. We're just going to, we're going to do the exact same tournament, only we're going to cut you all out of it. Uh, you know, we're still going to let all the, you know, all the one team from every conference and allow them to fairly earn money and all that. This is just one model of what the finances would look like. This is strictly eat what you kill based on the last two years, uh, what each conference could stand to make. You know, you're taking a look at this. The ACC is leaving an extra about $11 million and probably average out to about 15 if you did it in a normal, like the way I would actually imagine it doing. So call it an extra, you know, 10 to 15 million a year on the table right now that the ACC has earned that is being given out to Division Two and Division Three and everybody else. Now, that would be awful for Division Two or Division Three, but it really isn't their money. They didn't earn it. It's earned by you guys in your ACC tournament and that is sending people to the big dance. This is just big dance money. Every ACC school is leaving 10 to $15 million on the table right now. 
that would be really nice in your current TV contract. So along those lines, and you, you gave a great sales pitch for the Big Ten. You further solidified why I think, and I, you know, James and I have talked about why we like the Big Ten. If you were the SEC, what is your sales pitch to, to Florida State? Because I, I get it. I understand. It's the, the football juggernaut. It's what it is football-wise. What is their pitch to Florida State other than football? <laughs> their pitch is the Big Ten won't take you, so come to us. Um, I mean, I, I don't, they're institutionally, there is not a reason to be, the SEC is, oh my God, they're going to come for me on Twitter for saying this. You know what your uh, opening they, line to this, Tony, is what you always say. There are no crap schools in power five. There so are, there are no there. crap they're schools. Tony, in power, I, Tony, yeah, Tony, right. brother, they've been, they've been Make everybody in. feel good first. Tony, no, there are, there are the, the lowest, the lowest team in the power five. Is, that they're not very smart already. It's not your fault. You didn't make these numbers. The numbers are the numbers. They're not very they smart. Are. Tony, they there are, I mean, there are, there are no <laughs> bad teams Tony, I was in, in Power coming, 5. They've been, coming but, for th- they've been coming at me for three years, Tony, so you're good. Don't worry. They've been coming at me on Twitter for three years, so you're fine. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the SEC, institutionally, the SEC is just not anything on par with the Big Ten because institutionally, the SEC does not do for you as an institution what the Big Ten does. The SEC does not give you those integrated li- – integrated like the big – we'll, we'll pick on the Big 12. Because SEC is starting to do a little more stuff. The Big 12, their academic component is they give some, like, certificates to, like, the best scholar athletes at your school. Isn't that cool? whoop de doo um, The Big 10, like, a guy I was talking to the other day was doing some research stuff. And, like, the University of – he goes to Indiana. The University of Wisconsin has, like, all this crazy research stuff. And so it was all being, like, immediately sent to him from Wisconsin to Indiana. Like – for you guys to be able to launch into that, I mean, you'd have all the academic resources of UCLA at your disposal and of Michigan and Ohio, like all at, if you're part of the Big Ten. In addition to that, like, you know, the, your history, your chairman of the history department is being going to getting his like leadership training with like the chairman of the Big Ten history department. Your PhDs, they're trying to graduate and get jobs as professors. Yeah. How about that networking, which is they actually do hire each other's professors into each other's networks. As an institution, again, Big Ten is for billions, not the cute millions of sports. You are exponentially better off if you can get into the Big Ten. But if you can't get into the Big Ten, the SEC is a great place to be.